defense. We're getting into the playoffs now, so let's see if guys, uh, you know, start ramping up on the uh, on the defensive end of the floor. But uh, let's get in some news and notes. And I'd I'd be I'd be wrong if I didn't start with uh, with Dame, who I have in my notes here as a man on fire. Right? He is absolutely on fire in the bubble. I just want to point out. At our first podcast, we did buy and sell. We bought a team. We bought a player. I bought a player. I bought Damian Lillard. And this is the reason. First Blazers player to go back-to-back 50-point games. He dropped 61 points last night. The guy is scorching hot. He He's on his, fire. He's absolutely he on, on he fire. Said during, he said on that interview yesterday after the game, well, I didn't come to, to go home or, or – I or, quote – I packed for the entire three months. Dude, the guy's a beast. The guy's a beast. I mean, three point range. So unreal. let me let me let me let me read you his stats here. Thirty seven. This is all in the bubble. Thirty seven mm-hmm. points per game. Nine point three assists per game. Four point four rebounds per game. A steal what's he, what's he, per game. Yeah, what's he shooting from three? I want to know. Forty eight percent from the floor. Forty one percent from three. Eighty nine percent from the free throw line. And I read a stat today that I'm pretty sure said that he was 97% after he missed those two free throws against the Clippers. It's just been absolutely crazy. And, and the He's, pair pretty much started after that Clippers game, after PG yeah. and Pat were going at him. Well, it really, it really put him – he was obviously, I mean, I just read the stats. Like, obviously, he's been on fire in the bubble. But when you get clowned like that by, like, by Pat Bev and Paul George – after what Dame has done specifically to Paul George in the past, but he's knocked – and he said it too. He's knocked both those dudes out of the playoffs. So he just, you know, he was getting clowned. He didn't like it. He responded. And now he's, in, in, now he's popping off. Now everybody's on his – now everybody's on his I know. I know we, on one of our – one of our caps on – probably our last caps on podcast that we did with you, me, and Stick, uh, we tried to name our top five NBA players or top ten NBA players. Mm-hmm. And I tried to – Listen, I threw Damian Lillard in there, and I was getting backlash about it. He's got to be. Now, you know, I'll only crow here. I gave you, I gave you a lot of backlash because I said I would rather, I said I would rather Chris Paul than Dame Lillard. Um, I don't know Chris if Paul, that, yes, as a team player, but to win a win a basketball game, right? In that I don't know quarter, if I want Dame Lillard. I don't want Chris Paul just because Chris Paul. Chris Paul makes the team better. Right. If I want to, if I want to win, if I want to win a game, I'll probably get, I'll, I'll probably take Dame and. Hope he gets hot. If I want to win an entire, you know, seven game series, maybe I'll take, you know, maybe I'll take Chris Paul. The thing with Dave is Dave gets hot in the fourth quarter, whether he's go, he'll be ice cold going into the fourth quarter. And then that's it. That's it. He, he, he just gets hot. He'll take those threes. Um, he knows how to draw the, the, he knows how to draw the fouls on the three point line too. He's He's always going to, he's always going to get a bucket. Like he, he can pull up from the logo, like it's like mm-hmm. nickname Logo Lillard, right? Obviously, mm-hmm. he can pull up from the logo, but he can make it from the logo, right? Mm-hmm. And if that's not falling, regular three point might. If that's not falling, he can get to the rim at will, right? Like he's he is a like a, a phenomenal basketball player. Listen, and he's in general, it here. he's trying to get his. That team, I, I think that that Portland Trailblazers team is is going to give. I think they're going to make the eight seed. I think well, they have to beat the Nets tomorrow at nine p.m. Yeah. Okay, so, so they have to beat the it, Nets. The Nets are five and two in the bubble, mind you. I'm just, I'm just stating facts here. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not right. swinging right. one way Let's, or another. I'm just letting you know the Nets are five and two in the bubble. Okay, and what are the Bucks? The Bucks in the, the Bucks bubble? are like the Bucks are like two and four in the bubble. Three, yeah, and, three it's okay. and three. Yeah, and so, I so mean. I mean, we can talk records, but <laughs> good teams are good. Teams. Well, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just stating facts. I'm just letting you know the Nets are five and two. Listen, I'm just saying that <laughs> when, when playoff when the playoffs come in it's gonna be Lakers again. when it's like it's gonna be Lakers Portland. Well it's been Lakers. a playoff game. It's been a playoff game for them for the for seven games, right? Um where they had they basically had to win almost every single game to get a spot. And we'll get into different scenarios later. We have a a, a, a bit in between here, but well the East is set. The West is the only yeah. The East is set. The West is still the West. There's still some some shakiness going here. But Dame Lillard called the game against the Nets the most important game of their lives, and 
I can already tell you as a Nets fan, it's not going to be Dame going for 60. It's going to be Mel going for 40, and we're going to lose, and they're going to get in the playoffs. I'm, you I'm think, telling you, you that right Mello's now. going to go for 40. Yeah, Melo kills this. Melo kills the Nets. Listen, because the, dude, Nets, I, the Nets have the philosophy of, like, if you're going to take the mid-range, like, go for it. And Melo's just going to get in that mid-range spot. He's going to put whoever they throw at him in the post, and he's going to hit a turnaround in their face, and then they're going to start respecting it. It's going to leave someone else open. Right, but listen, no, I, Dame, I, I Dame's think... not. Dame might go for twenty-five, thirty. Uh, I mean, he's not going. They're, they're not going to lose that game. I don't think he's good. CJ's often playing pretty well. I mean, overall, you know, Nurk has come back from his injury really well. Um, he's playing mm-hmm. really well. Their bench, Gary Trent Jr. is playing out of his mind. Um, I've just been really impressed. Gary Trent Jr. Work. is is in conversation for probably like, I, I know it's like I know they're saying they're they're doing like bubble teams, right? And yeah. it's kind of been played as like a joke, but the NBA is pretty serious about it. Gary Trent is probably in that consideration. Like Gary Trent has been like not in the not like you know top five player in the bubble, but he's been like he's been a pleasant surprise. Like he'll come in, lock down your best wing. When they really don't have a dude that can, you know, did, did they you don't, watch they, they don't the, have wings. Did you watch that Portland uh, Mavericks game yesterday? I watched the Portland Mavericks, uh, Mavericks mm-hmm. game yesterday, and it, it was yeah. a great game. I mean, the Mavericks are going to be a force to be reckoned with. Maybe not this playoff, maybe next year when they get a little, mm-hmm. you know, a little more experience. But I mean, that that game had a playoff feel yesterday. I mean, yeah. in the last two minutes. Well, they're they're going quarter. down. They're going down to the wire, hitting shots, hitting shots like. Luca's hitting shots. Porzingis is hitting shots. Maxi Kleba was is is a, was a man on a mission. 